Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand AP Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to learn about matrix properties, which is probably the most convoluted topic within matrices. But before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to part 4 of our multi-part lecture series on the topic of matrix, which is a subsection of mathematics. Up until this point, we have discussed matrix theory, matrix operations, and calculation of inverse of a matrix. Now we are going to discuss matrix properties. Now we are going to start discussion of matrix properties, but before we dive into matrix properties, I want to introduce a couple of definitions which are relevant and it will help us understand matrix properties better. The first one is singular matrix. So what is a singular matrix? Singular matrix is a matrix, a square matrix, okay? So it is an n by n matrix where the number of rows and columns are equal, which does not have an inverse. Singular matrix has zero determinant. So whenever you have a matrix that has a zero determinant, it cannot have an inverse because as we saw previously, inverse of a matrix is equal to adjoint of the matrix divided by its determinant. Now if determinant is equal to zero, so we'll be in a situation where we'll have an adjoint div divided by zero. And this is an indeterminate form. So we cannot have, we cannot calculate this undefined. So matrix, it's, it's important to remember that this type of a matrix is um, singular and it is singular because the determinant is always equal to zero. And these are some of the examples. Okay, so these are square matrices. So when you look at this particular matrix, if I was to calculate the determinant, it would be zero minus zero, which is equal to zero. For the second one, I have zero times one minus zero times one, which is again equal to zero. And then for this one, again, I have zero times one, minus one times zero, which is equal to zero. So these are all examples of singular matrices. Rank of a matrix was discussed in the previous lecture, but I will quickly recap this here because it will be relevant for matrix properties. Rank of a matrix is the maximum number of its linearly independent columns or rows. Rank of a matrix cannot be greater than the number of its rows or columns. At best, it would be equal to the number of rows or columns. And linearly independent column or rows basically means that each individual row or the row in question is not formed or is not a scaled up version of any other row or it cannot be obtained by performing row operations on a combination of rows and same is true for column. If you want to take a quick look at an example that we did in the previous lecture, it shows you how one of the rows was actually could be developed from, could be obtained by operations on the other two rows. So that third row was not independent, okay? Now two matrices are considered to be row equivalent matrices if they, if, if one of the matrix, let's say if we have A and B. So if I can do a bunch of row operations on a matrix A, that is I can add row one and row two and then subtract it from row three and multiply row three by two or something like that. So these are all row operations, right? If somehow I can change this matrix with a bunch of row operations into a matrix B, then these two matrices are considered to be row equivalent matrix, okay, matrices. They are not equal matrices, but they are row equivalent matrix uh, matrices because I can change this particular matrix into this matrix by performing row operations. I'm personally not a big fan of definitions, but it is important to have some understanding of these definitions, especially because they're not explained in the NCSFE reference handbook. These, some of these terms, you'll see that they are mentioned in NCSFE reference handbook, and I'm providing these additional details so that you can appreciate these concepts a little bit better. So null space, null space of a matrix A consists of all entries of another matrix B such that A times B is equal to zero and B is not equal to zero. So if I have a matrix A, okay, and I have a matrix B, if I can multiply A with B, 
then and if the result is equal to zero then this matrix b every entry in this matrix b okay b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 all of these entries will be considered null space of matrix a so a good example that i like to give is and we have to make sure that b is not equal to zero so it's pretty simple to assume that okay if a is multiplied by zero the result will be zero so this is uh, the null space no b cannot be equal to zero b has to be another matrix uh, such that when it's multiplied with a it will result in zero so when you compare this concept with the inverse matrix concept where we were multiplying a with a inverse and we were obtaining i right so it is a similar concept but in this case this is not a inverse this is a matrix comprised of the null space such that when it is multiplied with a the result is equal to zero my reason for going through those definitions was so that we can understand these properties that will be discussed now and these properties are mentioned in ncs fe reference handbook and they use the terms that we have just discussed briefly so these properties are very unique and in a sense very interesting because what it basically is telling us that if we have an n by n matrix so a square matrix okay with equal number of rows and columns and it comprises of real numbers so not imaginary numbers real numbers then for this matrix if any one of these properties is true okay then all of these properties are going to be true and if we find that any one of these properties is not true then by the nature of the matrix properties then none of these are going to be true so you don't need to go ahead and check whether the matrix matrix has an inverse or whether you it is singular or non-singular or whether the determinant exists whether the rank of the matrix is n and so on and so forth okay so whatever is easier for you to check whether calculating the inverse is easier I'll tell you what is mostly what is generally the easiest determinant. So if you find that determinant of the matrix A is not equal to zero, then it basically means that it is a non-singular matrix. It will also have an inverse. It will also have this product will also have a unique solution. The rank will also be equal to n, and the number of uh, the rows of A will all be linearly independent, and so on and so forth. So let's go through it sequentially and hopefully it will make sense so the first item is saying that a is non-singular so that's why i had to define what a singular matrix is a singular matrix is a matrix for which the determinant is equal to zero so if if a is non-singular it basically means that the determinant of a is not equal to zero so you can see that if property one is true then automatically this number four will be true and if the determinant of a is not equal to zero then we can calculate the inverse right because a inverse is equal to adjoint divided by determinant and the reason why we are not able to calculate the inverse for singular matrices is because you end up with a zero in the denominator and then it becomes an undetermined form right you cannot mathematically calculate it so the inverse will also exist and on top of that the other thing is that a is row equivalent to identity matrix so this is an interesting concept because row equivalent as i mentioned so if row equivalent matrices are two matrices where you can perform operations on one of the matrix and arrive at the second matrix so if i have an identity matrix okay if i want to convert this identity matrix into matrix a it is pretty simple because i basically have all the entries okay along the diagonal and I can basically multiply and add with constants along the rows and come up with any matrix which is three by three okay any matrix A uh, which has all the entries whichever entries I need because I can multiply it row one with a constant add it to row two multiply row two with a constant add it to row three and so on and so forth so it will be row equivalent to identity matrix and rank of a is n so if a rank of a matrix matrix is equal to n it's n by n matrix it basically means that all n rows of the matrix are linearly independent so that's how six and seven are linked and if the rank is n 
then it basically means that you have n independent columns as well right that flows from the definition of the rank of the matrix and this one is not very obvious property number three it says that a times x will have a unique solution what it's basically saying is that when you try and find this matrix b which when multiplied with a will result in e in zero there will only be one such matrix for each matrix okay there will only be one matrix b for a given matrix a that will basically produce this result so this is not very obvious but as you can see all the other properties are very obvious and and the most interesting thing about this is that you don't need to go through all of these properties so if you're given a matrix a and you're being asked whether this matrix has so if you have this matrix a and you're being asked to find out whether this matrix has this property or not, you just go ahead and calculate the determinant. If the determinant is not equal to zero, then you can, and A has to be an N by N matrix as well. Then you can confidently say that, okay, since the determinant is not equal to zero, yes, A times X will have a unique solution. And A will also have an inverse. A will be a non-singular matrix. The rank of A is this. And the number of rows that are linearly independent all of the rows are linearly independent, all the columns are uh, linearly independent, and so on and so forth. So in most of the cases, finding the determinant is the easiest way to verify all of these properties. Problem number nine is asking us to find the determinant of the matrix, which is given over here. Now, although we have done a lot of determinant calculations in this lecture, and the reason I'm bringing this up again is that this is a matrix that we have actually seen previously. And once we go through this solution and the next problem, it will make more sense as to why I'm presenting this again. So we can calculate the determinant of this three by three matrix by using the formula that we have discussed previously. And you will find that the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. Now that we know that this particular matrix has a determinant which is equal to zero, we are being asked to comment on the following properties of the given matrix that whether A is singular or not, whether it has an inverse, whether this is a unique solution. So we've established that determinant of A is actually equal to zero in the previous question, whether the columns are linearly independent or not, rows are linearly independent, what is the rank, whether A is row equivalent to identity matrix, and whether the null space of A is equal to zero. So as I explained previously, in problem number nine, we established that the determinant of A is actually equal to zero, right? So since this statement is false, statement number four is false, by default, all the other statements will be false, okay? And another way of looking at it is that if you actually go back to lecture number one, I presented you the same matrix and I asked you to calculate the rank of the matrix. And we established that this third row was actually the sum of row one and row two. So that's why it was not linearly independent and the rank of the matrix was two. So this is a three by three matrix, okay? And its rank is two, which we calculated before even knowing anything about matrix properties, right? So that's why the rank of A is not equal to N. A is a three by three matrix, so N is equal to three. Since this property is not true, this is false, everything else is false, and a good example is this exam this uh, practice problem that we did. Because row three is equal to row one plus row two, row three is not linearly independent, column three was also not linearly independent, so that's why although the matrix dimensions were three by three, the rank is two. See, so the rank is not three, rank is not 10. And similarly, you can systematically, by going through it in detail, uh, you can reject all the other properties. So these properties are handy because by inspection, by taking a look at either the rank of the matrix, which is generally easy to calculate, sometimes it can be difficult, but the most definite way of evaluating these properties, as I mentioned, is finding the determinant. So a determinant of a three by three matrix, although it is cumbersome to calculate by hand, you can calculate it by calculator. And once you've established whether it is equal to zero or not, you can go about commenting on, on a lot of other properties of the 
matrix just because you know that the determinant is zero or it's not zero. If the determinant of this matrix was not equal to zero, then all of these properties would have been true because it would have been a non-singular matrix because the determinant was not equal to zero. It would have had an inverse because adjoint of A divided by the determinant would not be an indeterminate form. The, then we would have a unique solution for this. Determinant would be not be equal to zero and the rank of the matrix would be equal to n, rows would be linearly independent and so on and so forth. So that's the reason why I went through those definitions and I went through these practice problems to explain you that matrix uh, matrices and n by n square matrices are very unique and they carry these properties and it becomes very easy for us to analyze these matrices because of these uh, interesting features. In this lecture, we learned about matrix properties and did a couple of practice problems to reinforce our understanding of this concept. As you saw, we don't really need to calculate all parameters when it comes to matrix properties. We only need to identify or calculate one or two easy parameters and based on that, we can actually tell a lot about the matrix. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I'm confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCS FE electrical and computer exam specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well reviewed course comes with an amazing 30 day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video.